We can solve a non-homogeneous system if A is diagonalizable, as we discussed before. How does this work in practice? And what are the tricky parts? And does it always work? We will see all of that when we go through an explicit example in this video. So let's go. We have x prime equals a times x plus some uh, non-homogeneous part. Here we have our matrix A and A is diagonalizable. Uh, I will just give uh, eigenvalues, eigenvectors from linear algebra. You know how to compute them. In this case, we have lambda minus 3 and minus 1 with corresponding eigenvectors 1 minus 1 and 1, 1, which means that we can write A equals PDP inverse, uh, V1, V2 in P, and the lambda 1 and lambda 2 in the diagonal matrix. So there we go. How do we use this to solve our non homogeneous problem? Well, we do our familiar trick. We have uh, x prime equals a times x plus g, so put the p inverse everywhere here. Here, uh, here we have the p, d, p inverse, so the p inverse and the p canceled each other. You set again y equals p inverse times x, so your problem becomes y prime equals d times y plus p inverse times g of t. Now, first of all, we need to determine p inverse times g of t. Here we have our p. We can compute the inverse. The determinant of p equals 1 times 1 equals 1 minus minus 1 times 1 minus minus 1. So 1 plus 1 equals 2. So there's the factor 1 half. Uh, we switch the numbers on the diagonal. Well, they are the same, so they remain there. Put minus on all of the diagonal items. So there we have our inverse times g. And then we compute this, uh, we get 1 minus 1 uh, times 2 uh, times the e power 0 so gives us 2 times e to the power minus t uh, divided by 1 half gives us the e to the power minus t and same for the other component. So there we have p inverse times g. Now what do we have? So y1 prime y2 prime equals d times y1 y2 plus p inverse times g. So now we are decoupled. We have y prime equals minus 3 times y1 plus e to the power minus t and y2 prime equals minus y2 plus e to the power minus 2 e to the power minus t so end of the first step we now have two decoupled equations one for y1 and one for y2 and now we have to solve them separately so this first step you can always do that but in solving for y1 and y2 there can be problems because as you will see we will have to integrate shortly so what do we do? We bring the 3y1 uh, uh, to the other side and we have y1 prime plus 3y1 equals e to the power minus t. We can use the method of integrating factors. We have an integrating factor of e to the power of 3t. So multiply left and right with this e to the power of 3t. On the uh, right hand side we get e to the power 2t then. And the left hand side simplifies to y1 e to the power of 3t prime. You can check this by differentiating, of course. If you have y power 1 times e to the power of 3t prime, if you differentiate, you get y prime times e to the power of 3t plus y1 times 3 times e to the power of 3t, which are indeed the two terms you have over there, equals your e to the power 2t. Integrate left and right. Here's the tricky part. Integrating the left hand side is always fine. You just get y1 e to the power of 3t. Integrating the right hand side can be difficult. Here we are lucky. We just have to integrate e to the power 2t, which gives us 1 half e to the power 2t plus some constant. And there we have our y1 t. So now we have found y1 of t onto y2 of t. We can use the same method. We know y2 prime plus y2 equals e to the power minus t. Now our integrating factor is e to the power t. So in Multiply with e to the power t left and right. The right hand side you just have a 1 now. Uh, again, the left hand side equals y2 times e to the power t prime equals 1. Integrate, you get a y2 e to the power t equals t plus c2. And solve and you find your y2 of t. So now we have our y1 of t and y2 of t. So the only thing left is now we want to compute our x of t. Well, that's again standard, because th that can always be done. x of t equals p times y. p consists of your eigenvectors, 
y of your solutions, which you just found. So you get your first solution times v1 plus your second solution times v2. Well, your first solution was uh, 1 half e to the power minus t plus some constant e to the power minus 3t. Your second solution is still here, t e to the power minus t v2 plus c2 times e to the power minus t v2. And then we shuffle a bit here. This term, this term goes here. And use what we know about uh, v1 and v2. v1 was 1 minus 1, v2, 1, 1. So we get a 1 minus 1 times this factor comes over here. And a 1, 1 times this factor goes over here. So now we have written our solution finally as a homogeneous solution and some particular solution. So there finally we have our total solution. So what are the steps? First you use the diagonalization to decouple. That always works, it's always standard. Then you have to solve for y1 and y2. Can be tricky because there's some integration there. And once you have your y1 and y2, you can compute your x, and that is standard again, because x equals p times y. So this is how you use this, the methods. And uh, these are the steps and the standard parts and the tricky parts.